Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus is Lord. And this is the voice of victory. And this is Pastor Henry Madawa. And today I'm coming to you from Kiev, Ukraine. I know many people when they hear the word Ukraine, they associate Ukraine with violence, revolutions. And, but let me say, there's another revolution happening. That's the spiritual revolution. People are getting saved. People are getting healed. Miracles are happening. The kingdom of God is advancing. And that's a revolution that brings life, joy, peace. And what a wonderful joy to be part of that revolution. Praise God. You see, whenever you hear about Jesus, you will never be the same. Because he changes the people that hear about him. There is power in hearing about Jesus. Whenever you hear, it changes you. It changes your mindset. It changes your worldview. It changes everything about you. It changes the atmosphere of your thinking and your life. And that's why we need to hear the Bible being preached. Praise the Lord. Now, today I'm coming to you with a message that God has put on my heart. And this is a message of pursuing the great pursuit. Everybody in this life is pursuing something, running after something. I know dogs pursue food. In their instinct, they're always looking for food. Everybody's pursuing something. But there is something that is more precious than all the other pursuits that you can have in your life. I want to read the book of uh, Philippians. That's the letter that of the Apostle Paul was writing to the Philippians, he puts uh, some things that I think are very, very important. This is a great pursuit. Your life stops being a life when you stop pursuing something worthwhile. If you have nothing to pursue, nothing you are living for, nothing you are running after, your life stops being a life, it begins to be an existence. Now, existing is not the same thing as living. If you want to live, pursue after something good. And in pursuing, your life is invigorated. You become much more joyful and exuberance comes in because you are pursuing after. God has never wanted us to be a passive people. He always wanted us to pursue a goal and a worthwhile goal. Now, look at what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 3. Paul is talking about himself. Verse 6, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. I want you to realize zeal is not a measurement of pursuing. Zeal is needed when you want to pursue after something. But you need to pursue to have zeal with knowledge. Paul was very zealous persecuting the church, but he had the wrong knowledge. So instead of running towards the right goal, he was running towards the opposite goal. Can you imagine? He thought he was doing something worthwhile. In the meantime, he was running away from the goal that God had for him. In other words, don't just run. Run with knowledge. Don't just pursue with zeal, but have zeal with knowledge. I know some people who are very good people. They have lots of zeal, very zealous, but no knowledge. And what they do does not bring any fruit because it has no knowledge in it. So if you want to be effective, you need to make sure you have the zeal and we have the knowledge. When those two are working together, you will produce fruit. Now the Bible says there are a number of things that we need to pursue in life according to what Paul was doing. And the reason why I choose Paul is because he did a good job. I mean, he advanced the kingdom of God. So if we were to do anything like what he did, we might as well find out what he was pursuing in life. Now, let's read together. 
Now, the Bible says, verse 7, But what things were gained to me, those are counted loss for Christ. Before you can pursue something new, you need to let go of all the old. You cannot run towards the new when you are holding on to the old. That's what many people do. And the reason why people hold on to the old is because the old is safe. I mean, I know what it is. I'm used to it. It's more comfortable to stay with it. So they want to march forward, but they don't want to let go of the old. So Paul says, I forget those things that were behind me. Now, the Bible says he wants to be found in Christ. Now, verse 10, pursuit, pursuit number one, that I may know him. That's the pursuit that needs to be the cry of your life. I want to know him. All the other pursuits, they will not work if you are not hungry to know the Lord. It's knowing God that brings success in life. How do you pursue God? You are hungry for more of God. God is revealed. You cannot calculate him. You cannot read him in a book. He reveals himself to you. Now, he only reveals himself, himself to you when you are pursuing after him, when you are hungry for more of God, when you are in love with God, when you desire him more than anything else, and when you treasure him more than any other treasure, and you revere him. I mean, reverence towards God is so important. You worship him. You honor him. You put him, you give him the first place in your life. The prime of your life is given to God. He wants to be number one. Seek after God. Seek after God in prayer. Seek after God in fasting. Seek after God in worshiping. Seek after God in giving. When you pursue God, he will rearrange everything else in your life according to the right perspective. He will put order in your life. The reason why many people have an orderless life is because they never seek after God. They seek after things. And things never arrange your life the way that God wants it to be. But when you see God and He comes into your life, He'll bring His order into your life, His blessings into your life, His abundance into your life, His protection into your life. And the truths of the Bible become real when you seek after God. Now, pursuit number two. The Bible says, Paul was saying, I want to know him. And he said, I want to know the power of his resurrection. That's pursuit number two. I don't seek God only. I also want his power. I actually spend time fasting and praying asking for God to release his power so I can effectively do the work of God. It's not a sin to seek after the power of God. It's not. And it comes the same way. The revelation of the Bible, revelation of the scriptures, knowledge of the truth. And by the way, when God comes into your life, he comes with power. The power of God is released when we seek after, when we are hungry for it, when we pursue it, and we spend time in the presence of God. When I have something to do that's very important, I actually take time to fast and to pray, asking for God to release his power. And I pray in tongues so the power of God, the presence of God in me can be released. And I look for revelation from God, his directions, so I can use them for effectiveness, because the power of God is released when we get revelation from God. Oh, what a powerful word. By the way, I will continue in a moment. I will be back in a short while. May God bless you. Like it was 2,000 years ago, Today, our loving God touches people, heals and delivers them. 
His love is able to move mountains and transform any circumstances. He was deaf. वो बहरा था. Never heard a word. कभी भी नहीं सुना था. Now he's 40 years old. अब इसकी उम्र 40 साल है. And Jesus. और यीशु. Came to the rescue. आज इसको छुड़ाने के लिए. Open his ears. इनके कानों को खोला. And we rejoice. God bless you. You may join the ministry of Pastor Henry Madava by your prayer and financial support, and so become a partner in the great work of the Lord. To become a partner, please visit the website of Victory Church or call the number you see on the screen. Praise God for the great pursuits. You have to pursue something. You cannot be passive in life. You know, I foresee myself, even if I'll be a hundred years old, I will not be passive. To the very last breath of my life, I'm going to be pursuing something. It's when you're pursuing that you live. When you become passive, you don't live, you exist. I know some people who pursue after a husband or a wife, and when they get married, they become passive. You see, getting married is not the end of life. It's a step, a good step in your life, but that's not the end. Continue to pursue after other things. Your brains will stay alive much longer if you pursue after knowledge, even when you become old. Pursuit number three. The Bible says, Paul was saying, mentioning the things that he pursues. And he says, besides God himself, and the power of his resurrection, he says, and the fellowship of his sufferings. So the sufferings will make you to be more conformable unto his death. In other words, sufferings will help you to be, more conf to be conformed more to the way to the death of Jesus in your life, the meaning of his death. I know so many people who want to know God, who want to know the power of God, but they hate the suffering that it brings. If you want to be a man of power, if you want to be a man of worthwhile living, or a woman, don't be afraid of the sufferings. When they come, remember that's part of life. Suffering is part of life. I know some people, they are looking for a good job. They get it, and then suffering comes because of the job. It's part of life. People are looking for success, and they get it, and suffering comes. That's part of life. And people want to follow Jesus to do the work of God, and suffering comes. That's part of life. And the reason why it's very difficult to deal with suffering is because it comes through people. And then we begin to associate some people with our suffering. Then we have enemies of people who were supposed to love. That what, that's what happens between a husband and a wife. You see, he begins to suffer or she suffers because of him, and then he thinks or she thinks he or she is the bad guy, not realizing suffering was going to come anyway. So here's the deal. Don't run away from your pursuit because of sufferings that come. They are part of life. Now, the Apostle Paul says, those sufferings were making him more conformed unto the death of Jesus. In other words, suffering will bring you that depth that will help you, that in your life you'll be conformed to what Jesus gained for you when he died on the cross. And then the, I love what the Apostle Paul says. He says in verse 12, not as though I have already attained Either were already perfect, but I follow after. He says, I pursue, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended by Jesus Christ. There is a reason why Jesus came into your life. And Paul wanted that reason to be fulfilled. And I love what it says here. It says, verse 14, I press towards the mark or the goal for the prize of of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You see, it's not, my calling is not what I want to do. 
my calling is what God wants me to do. Some people make this big mistake. They think, if I want it, it's God's will. That's not a, that's not a correct equation. If God wants it, it's good. If you want it, it's not guaranteed to be good. I know in my life, there have been many things that I've wanted, which God did not want. But since my theology, my thinking, my philosophy was, if I like it, it must be God's will. No, it's not God's will. If you look in the Bible, you will see so many times the children of Israel, they wanted some things, but they were not God's will. They were entering into union with some people that was not God's will. They were worshipping some pagan gods that was not God's will. You see, the will of God and your will are not the same. I know we live in the 21st century where what I like is my God. Well, it's not necessarily true. It may be your God, but it's a pagan God and will bring destruction to your life. Here is a wise thing to consider. Whenever you want something very much, before you enter into doing it, ask this question to yourself, quietly with nobody listening. Does God like it? If you're not sure, spend time with God in prayer, listening. I want you to check what's in your heart. Is peace coming? Or there's something that is coming up that, that, that's resisting whatever you want to do? The equation, if I like it, God likes it, is not true. It's not always true. Sometimes it is true, but not always. God's will has to be obeyed, even if you don't like it. Eventually, it will bring blessings to your life. So the Apostle Paul was saying, he wants to fulfill the high calling of God. What's the high calling? Of God for you. What has God called you to do? Pursue it with all your life, with all your heart, with all your strength. And God will bless you in this world and he will reward you in the world to come. Pursue your calling at all costs. Never give it up. That's the reason why you were born. Hallelujah. And one of my callings is to preach the gospel to the nations. Bring the healing power to the people. And I want you to watch some of the testimonies of what God did when I was in Karachi. In fact, you will see a woman who, four years, she was paralyzed. The power of God healed her. She's well until today. You'll see wonderful miracles. I want you to watch them. And let's rejoice together to see the reality of the power of God. I will be back shortly after these testimonies. The sister was paralyzed on her right hand side. The right hand side. The right hand side. Yep. And she could not move her arm, but now she can move. Okay, you were paralyzed on your right hand side? For how long? For how long? For how long? For how long? Charles, four years for the last four years. She was four or four? Four, 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 four years. years. Four years. Four years. Four years. Yeah. Yeah. And now what changed in your body? What changed? Your hand? Your body she's, or only your hand? She says that she's feeling yeah. better. Yeah. The, was not able to move her hand. Only hand, all yeah. the leg as well. Even leg as well. Now, can you move that leg? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, can you move that hand? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this hand. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you. What happened over here? This lady had a hearing problem for eight years. Now she can hear properly. Okay, come over here, lady. This man, eight years ago, said that she could hear but she was less able to listen. But now, in prayer, her ears have been opened. What was the problem with your hearing? It was ten years ago. So she didn't hear well. Twelve years back, years back, years back years she years went through the surgery because. Palms were also healed. Now she has been healed. Now. So. 
both years or one year? Ekta ya dono te? Ekta. Only one year. Only one. Now, now it's open. Now you can hear. Okay. भी करवाया था मैंने इसका जख्म था दस बारह साल से पंद्रह सोलह साल से ज्यादा हो गए आज सुनाई दे रहा है पंद्रह साल से आपका कान बंद था आप सुन नहीं सकती थी यस नाउ यू कैन हियर अब आप सुन सकती है कैन यू क्लोज दिस अदर आप अपने इस कान को बंद करें जरा Can you hear me? आपको आवाज आ रही है Yes. Now can you hear me? अब आपको आवाज आ रही है Yes. अभी आवाज आई आपको Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's give Jesus a hand of praise. This ear is open. खुदा उनका शुक्र हो जिसने इस बेरे कान को खोल दिया For 15 years. जो 15 साल से बंद था She was deaf in this ear. और वो अपने इस उल्टे कान से बेरी थी Pastor, this young boy. He had an operation for mm. his left kidney, yep. but pain was constantly. And today, after prayer, the pain has He's left gone. him. God bless you. What's your name? Your name is Jasper. 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 Yes. Congratulations, Jasper. Jasper, you have come back. You have come back. You have come back. Is this your sister? Yes. Yes. What's yes, your name? Yes. 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 Sharon. 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 Do you love Sharon? आप शेरोन से प्यार करते हैं yes. okay. Can yes. you tell her? आप उसको बता सकते हैं और यीशु इनको आपसे भी ज्यादा प्यार करता है गॉड ब्लेस यू वॉर ए वंडरफुल सेवियर वन आई सी दिस मिराकल्स दे मेक मी है I pursue after God. I pursue after his power. I pursue revelation knowledge. I pursue my calling. I pursue the God-given relationships in my life. I never want to be stationary. I want never want to be passive. I always want to run after, hunt after, pursue. Do the same thing and God will bless you. Now, some of you need to pursue salvation because you are not even saved are you saved are your sins forgiven do you know jesus is your lord he loves you and today if you open your heart he can forgive your sins and you can become a new person say these words with me heavenly father i believe jesus the son of god i repent of my sins come into my heart lord jesus and be my lord in Jesus name amen if you pray that prayer god is forgiven you and now you are a new creature now i want to pray for you to receive your miracle that's part of my calling lay your hands wherever you are sick and say this with me by his stripes i am healed say i receive my healing right now in Jesus name now i'm going to pray for you Father in the name of Jesus release your power let it flow breaking down the power of sickness and disease removing pain and making everybody whole i can see a right knee being healed in the name of Jesus somebody has a metal plate in your body in your left i think it's in the thigh area God is removing that steel rod in Jesus name. Your breathing is being restored in the name of Jesus. Somebody's back pain is leaving. I mean the paralysis is going. The migraine headaches are gone. That you were hearing some funny sound in your head, it, it's going in the name of Jesus. You won't even feel it when you go to sleep tonight. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your healing power in Jesus name. Amen. Oh what a wonderful savior. I love Jesus and I love his word. Thank you partners for being so faithful. It's because of you partners we are able to be on the air and we are able to do the crusades that we do all over the world. I cannot say thank you enough. And thank you for watching. If God has touched you, please feel free to write us a letter. If you have any needs 
please write us, email us, whatever you can do on Facebook, and we will pray for you because God loves you, so we love you. Our mission in life is to love you and to help you because God loves you. Stay strong, pursue your mission, and God will stand with you in Jesus' name. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Pastor Henry Madava accepted this commandment of Jesus Christ as his personal commission. That is why the international ministry, Christ for All Cities, whose president is Pastor Henry, holds several massive services in the countries of Asia, Africa, and Europe every year. God manifests his power on each service in any country of the world. So you had leprosy? For how long? In the Kalam Nunti. Ten years. For ten years. Yes. And that's why you lost your fingers. Yes. Because of the leprosy. Yes. And you could not walk for a long time. And today, for the first time, you walk that distance. Yes. Jesus in the Bible. Yes, the Bible. Yes, the Bible. Yes, the Bible. Heals a leper. Who came to ask? And Jesus loves you. That's why he healed you. Serve Jesus. And love him. And pray him. The holding of such services, where thousands of people give their lives to Christ, is possible owing to the donations given by partners of Mission Christ for all cities. You can become a part of this team right now and participate in God's works with your finances and prayers. If you want to be a partner with us or to help the voice of victory to be on the air, or you want to be part of our worldwide ministry, then please send your offerings to the address on the screen or go to our website.